This is... This is it? Hold up. Whoa. Okay. That's already a pretty accessible unboxing experience. Okay. So, I've got an Xbox Series S. This is the next generation Xbox, not to be confused with Xbox One S, or even just the Xbox One X, or... Yeah, I imagine pre-orders didn't go over well for some folks who weren't fully informed with what to buy. I'll be completely honest with you, this is the first Xbox that I've owned since the Xbox 360. Uh, I kind of fell out of gaming as like a hobby around like when I was 18, which was about the time when the PS4 and Xbox One were coming out. I had a Wii U for a little bit, really just to play Mario Kart and Smash Brothers, but I didn't really touch it too much and then the switch came out and that really helped re-energize my interest in gaming but between just becoming an adult living independently having more expenses gaming just wasn't a priority as much but now that has sort of changed a lot more in the last couple years i've gotten very interested in helping make gaming more accessible for more people and honestly that might just be another reason why i fell out of it was i'm legally blind uh, there aren't a whole lot of games that uh, are very low vision friendly. So yeah, I didn't bring anything sharp. I've got keys. <laughs> yeah, this thing is the entry level Xbox for this next generation. It's it's not the Series X, so it's not as powerful. Um, but that's totally okay with me. I want to be able to test games. I want to be able to play games um, that are accessible or help improve the accessibility of games. I'm legally blind. I don't need to play in. 4k or 8k <laughs> really i don't that doesn't mean a whole lot to me to be honest um as long as it's like a clear picture and large text uh easy contrast to view that's what matters more so to me i may not have needed keys after all just tape this might be a lot easier to unbox and i was oh wow okay there's just a little peel on the box on the tape and make it very, very easy to just peel that off. Okay, that's already a pretty accessible unboxing experience. Here I am going to get something sharp because I'm just so used to packaging not being very unboxing friendly. And that, wow, all right. Whoa. So power your dreams. That's the... Oh, this is the console. Whoa! Oh my gosh. This is... This is it? Hold up. Whoa. Whoa. Alright. Again, I know this is like the entry level one and there's no CD drive in here and I'm totally digital anyway. Oh, it's nothing like that smell of unboxing something new. Whoa, this is... Hold on. I mean, uh, for comparison. So, here's a Nintendo Switch which is a, a handheld console, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I know it's not really a, much of a comparison, but I don't, I don't know, I don't really have anything else. To, I have a PS4 to compare it to, but I, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe this is it. Another thing uh, about the console is it has these tactile um, textures above the IO ports. So for things like the power for, uh, I wonder where this could be. I'm sure it would tell you online or in, in like the user manual. I know this is like USB, HDMI, storage expander. Okay, ethernet. Wow. <laughs> is there anything on the front? So it doesn't have anything on the front. There is a button. I'm assuming that's the power button. It looks like, it feels like, yeah. It feels like USB. Okay, reset button. Whoa, okay. I, sorry, I'm just still <laughs> impressed with just the size of this thing. This thing's got like, again, I haven't really looked too much at the tech specs of everything, but to my understanding, it has eight cores, 10 gigs of RAM. Again, consoles are very different from computers. I don't know how much that really matters. Yeah, I'm pretty certain I'm gonna need wires, right? Are there wires in here? App, it's telling me about, is there a controller? Oh, okay, I think I found it. It's in this other little cabinet. Within the box, 
This has got to be HDMI. Yeah. All right, cool. And we've got the power cable. Yes. All right, sweet. And that must be a controller. Double A batteries. Okay, I am still a little surprised <laughs> to come across double A batteries in 2020, but this does feel nice. This this feels good. That, oh, that D-pad feels dynamic. I like this. I, I've always loved the triggers. The, the feel of this controller has always been good. And the more importantly, the buttons, the A, B, X, Y are actually colored. That's pretty big. So something I can see is color, but even though you know I can see color, I can't see what letter it is. It's just way too blurry for me. So this helps knowing that yellow is above and yellow Y, I, I do know that. Red and B cancel, just kind of clicks A. And then that, you know, like kind of narrows down that X is gonna be blue. So that's helpful. But yeah, I, I've always I've always liked Xbox's controllers. There's definitely a bit of a rough te texture at the bottom. I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't, it's not smooth at all. That's an interesting feeling. Maybe I'll get used to it. I don't know. So that's the Xbox uh, One, nope, Xbox Series S. Wow, see, that naming. I, <laughs> I don't know how crazy I am about the naming scheme that they've gone with, but it, it's a thing. It's, they've already done it. All right, so we are in update controller. Sure, why not? Everything's got a firmware, doesn't it? <laughs> One of my fondest gaming memories is actually with Xbox. It's with Halo 3 and the Xbox 360. When I was about 12 years old. I had just gotten an eye surgery. And during the recovery, I was blinded for a whole month, like totally blind. Like my eyes had to be completely shut. I had to be blind for four weeks. Couldn't use any sight to let my eyes recover. I had navigated and learned my way through the Xbox 360 menu and through Halo's like, menu and i managed to get into games and like chat with people and have just like have fun keep in mind i was out of school so i had to be out of school for a whole month i mean what else was i gonna do my parents were working siblings at school now i'm at home all alone totally blind uh, and i had to find ways to keep myself busy so i would just socialize meet new people on xbox live and it was a lot of fun i'd get into like casual matches not ranked matches in halo 3 so like no one was mad if you like lost or were bad i would literally tell people like hey Guys, I'm totally blind right now. Just had eye surgery and I cannot see a thing, but I'm bored. So here I am on Halo 3 and people would have fun with that. People would guide me through and actually like help me get kills. They put me in like their, their uh, cars, their vehicles uh, in the passenger seat which is, and they'd tell me which direction to shoot in and either I'd miss or get lucky. Uh, yeah, that was a fun little fun story while this controller updates. <laughs> Good times. So we're updated. Cool. All right, so we're here. We're in the menu. Sweet. I'm assuming this is gonna be settings. Ease of access. This is what I need. <laughs> High contrast. Nope. Take me back. <laughs> Dark mode it is. Um, audio. Mono output, yeah. Uh, magnifier. There we go. Learn the shortcuts for access and adjust the magnifier. Press and hold the Xbox until it vibrates. Oh, okay. All right, cool. I would like a large on-screen keyboard. Follow controller base. Narrator is a screen reader that reads text buttons, and other items on your screen out loud. Narrator works best with the keyboard. Some things may not be read with the controller. Narrator now uses a standard keyboard layout. So Xbox has a built-in screen reader, which is great. You don't find this on the Switch. You won't find this on like older consoles. Um, I believe the Xbox One had this. So this just coming over to the new series uh, consoles. Fantastic, it's great. It sounds like all the vision stuff is best used when you have like a keyboard plugged in so you can access um, quick button shortcuts like navigating the screen reader or um, toggling zoom and, and or magnifier in this case. So I should probably get a keyboard. 
<laughs> That's good to know. So again, it's great that Xbox and Microsoft are doing what they can to bring over a lot of the Windows accessibility features into Xbox. Like it just, it makes sense with their whole ecosystem, but I'm just so happy to see it here. I know this is only going to continue to improve. I'm excited for, for what's to come of this next generation and accessibility. We're already seeing so many games try to prioritize accessibility from like AAA developers which and publishers, which is re really cool. And I'm excited to get back to playing Halo again. It's been uh, probably been almost a decade since I played a Halo. Halo Reach was the last one. I'm excited for this. I am not gonna do any gameplay right now, but follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash James Wrath. And over there I stream and I'll be streaming a lot more of next gen and how I play with accessibility settings. Uh, so follow me there and uh, follow me here and I'll be covering more videos about whether it's your questions or reviewing this piece of hardware. I'm just excited to dive deeper into the next gen accessibility experience, new AAA titles that are going to offer accessibility because already so many are from these developers, whether it's Microsoft, Sony, um, other AAA titles. So yeah, this is cool. It's great when everyone can play. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what are you excited for when it comes to these next generation consoles? What things are you going to be looking forward to? Whether it's games, it could be uh, accessibility features, it could just be a hardware, like the Xbox adaptive controller. Just let me know. I, I'm curious, uh, where are you with gaming? Do you not game? Do you game at all? I hope you could see something different today, and I will hear you next time. Bye.